there's so much more than just male, female, boy, girl. Mm -hmm. There always has been. We've just never had um, a ballsy enough society to take ownership and to talk about it and to allow people and allow themselves to be who they are. Um, the thing that got me the most actually was the fact that you'd get on the tube and people were actually talking to each other. It was, <laughs> that just blew my mind. I was like, wow, <laughs> didn't think I was in the same city. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was unreal, the, the support that we had um, from, the, from the whole country. Um, and I told my daughter, Emma, because they all thought I was dying. Emma had a house in Maidstone at that time. And she said, dad, why don't you come and live at the house? And she put her arms around me and she said, you know what, I know nothing about transgender people or what you're going through, she said, but I know this much. I'd rather have my dad in a dress than in a wooden box. And then words have always stuck with me since that day. There's no choice here. There are many things in life you can choose. You can choose where you live, what your moral compass is, whether you drink or not, what car you drive, what sport you play, what football or rugby team you support. There are many, many things in life we choose. But our sexuality is, is not one of them. And I said to myself, I need to accept who I am. And so for a corporate client to say you're too gay, I was like, wait a minute, I'm not out. I don't think I'm gay enough. <laughs> so I went the opposite. That was actually the impetus for me to come out publicly. I just, when I was discriminated against, I lost a massive six-figure speaking contract. Ironically, the guy was gay himself. If, if, if LGBT businesses in the United States were their own country, they'd be the 10th wealthiest in the world, uh, which is extraordinary. And yet, we don't even have basic banking protections. It's perfectly legal in 35 states for banks to say, we don't need to give money to your kind. Good luck with your small business. It was discussing uh, pride, discussing LGBTQ history, also discuss, discussing black history, uh, black pride, trans history, trans pride, all of these things. Um, are really important to to not just validating but acknowledging and celebrating the diversity that's already there and demonstrating that it's it's valued and that it's respected. So I think my proudest achievement was broadening out Stonewall and our looking beyond our peripheral vision to really help organizations think differently. And during my time we worked with over 800 companies, organizations, businesses, public sector bodies, helping them start the journey of understanding trans. Um, and understanding uh, the way in which they could make provision for their trans and non-binary staff. The most creativity and the most innovative teams are those where you have diversity of thought, diversity of people, diversity of backgrounds. And so I realised that at, um, in the insurance sector, particularly I think perhaps more than other sectors, um, it hasn't really embraced the importance of diversity and inclusion in the workplace yet. We need spaces where we can be creative. We need spaces where we can collaborate and network and and be ourselves. Mm. Poetry LGBT is all of that. It's, it's that space where there's just no judgment or discrimination in that space. And we need more spaces like that. It's, yeah, it's important to break the stigma down because so many people since I come, I came out as you know I was I was gay that. You know, loads of BMX girls and, and other sports have come out and, and felt that they could have the strength and the, the courage to do so too. How that awareness, that level of vulnerability, that level of sharing and understanding combined with our crazy goal, our vision, our values and our behaviours, that really was the difference and the reason why eventually we got to stand on top of the podium. But in general, I think uh, football obviously can do a lot more to create those safe spaces in the terraces, as well as on the pitches and within the inner structures of the game. Um, and, and the more that people are aware of people from the LGBTQ plus community that work for, in, in football as well, I think it opens doors for others to feel that they can be part of this um, community and this space and, and hopefully one day have a role within the game.